this is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, June 22nd. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Crypto investors and spectators have watched as the market has taken blow after blow in recent weeks. And it's caused a lot of people to ask not just what's going on with cryptocurrencies, but also if this is really how the markets are supposed to work, and if anyone is in charge. Those are just some of the questions we got about the sector, and our crypto reporter Paul Vigna is here to answer them. Hey Paul, thanks for coming back on the show. Hi, I am happy to be on the show. So a lot going on in the market. I want to start with something a few people asked about, and that's how regulators are reacting. Hi, my name is Noah Shahinian. What do our lawmakers and regulatory agency directors think about cryptocurrencies increasing presence in our financial markets? Are we going to see them, quote unquote, get hip to the times? Or are we going to see them wait for a global or national event to trigger a push or pull from the status quo? I don't know if we can ever say that any of our uh, elected and uh, employed government officials are going to get hip to anything. But (laughs) to the extent that they are, I I think it doesn't take a lot to see that there is a ton of attention on cryptocurrencies in Washington and in state houses around the country and indeed in capitals in other countries, too. I mean, all the federal agencies are looking at this. There are a number of bills floating around Congress that would regulate cryptocurrencies in various forms and guises. How soon you're going to get any comprehensive government regulation in the United States is a pretty open question. I'd be, you know, Congress has a lot on its plate right now. So as much as they might be interested in this and it's a hot topic, I don't know that they're going to really get anything done too quickly. Which means that until then, you will probably have what you have right now, which is a hodgepodge of regulations and agencies trying to control different parts of the cryptocurrency markets. I think that's probably going to be the case for some time. But at some point, without a doubt, I do believe that we will get a comprehensive set of regulations in the U.S. concerning cryptocurrencies. All right, so that's the regulatory front. Now let's take some questions on how these systems, I guess, are supposed to work. My name is Jesse McGinnis, and I'm curious, is the blockchain truly anonymous, and why or why not? Yeah, that's an interesting one. I think a lot of people over the last year or so saw this for the first time and were surprised that Bitcoin especially is much more traceable than people thought. And look, we could spend you know an hour on this, but... Very briefly, Bitcoin is pseudonymous. You don't have to attach an identity to some types of digital wallets. And that allows people to operate kind of anonymously, kind of anonymously. The reality is, though, that because Bitcoin and all cryptocurrencies really operate on an an open ledger, the transaction history is all public. So if you can trace that transaction history, and if at any point you can then attach an identity to it, you then know everything that that person has ever done on that blockchain. Okay, I want to bring up another question about how digital currencies are, are meant to work and kind of their purpose. My name is Raphael Almanzar. My question is, what's happened to the stable coins that were supposed to bring, again, stability that were paid to the U.S. dollar? How come recently, in the last month or so, some of them took a dive substantially below a dollar? Yes, that is a good one, Raphael. Uh, Look, the overarching thing about stable coins, you have to realize is, and it gets back to the, the question of regulations, there are really no standards for how a stable coin needs to be operated. There are certainly no legal standards for how a stable coin needs to be operated. So what you've got is there are a couple of very large ones now, but there are dozens of other ones. And they are constructed however the people building them think is the most clever way to go about it. So some of the ones that have come under pressure lately have been what they call algorithmic stable coins. They are not backed by hard assets. They are basically backed by a program that is designed to keep trading in line, to keep it pegged one-to-one with a national currency. As we saw under <laughs> extreme duress, those models broke. The ones that have not really broken have been the ones that are backed by assets. And that has been more stable so far. But even then, like I said, there is no real 
law, there's no legal basis for how these things are supposed, supposed to operate. So until you get that, you will probably have questions, you will definitely have questions about all of these stable coins. Paul, can you just tell us quickly kind of why stable coins were created, what sort of role they play in the crypto market? Sure. Very, very briefly, stable coins were created, and the first one was called Tether. Tether was really created because exchanges were having problems getting dollars. I mean, that, that's really all it came down to. Crypto companies, banks didn't want to do business with crypto companies, and they couldn't access the dollar system, and they needed to come up with a substitute. And the substitute was basically a synthetic dollar that they called a stable coin. That's what they're really for. They're really for liquidity in the markets. And their advantage is over the dollar, essentially, is that they allow you to trade 24-7. Uh, if you're doing your business through a bank, banks close at night, banks close at weekends, crypto exchanges don't ever close. So they need that constant source of liquidity. So that's really what stable coins were created to do. Okay, so our last question is a bit more broad, but it's also on how crypto is being used. Hi, my name is Logan Grasby. My question about cryptocurrencies is how they're actually being utilized as a currency today and how people are thinking about that they might be utilized in the future. You know what, L Logan, this allows me to, to make one of my favorite points about the crypto markets. And, and what you have to remember about the crypto markets and cryptocurrencies is that everything in them is really one giant live experiment. What could these things be used for? What are they being used for? What will they be used for in the future? The entire crypto market is designed to answer those questions at some point. Bitcoin was designed as a form of electronic cash, and it was designed to operate as a form of electronic cash that wouldn't be controlled by central banks. So is it being used as electronic cash now? A little bit. Mostly, it really is just being used for speculation. But I mean, there are people out there trying to make Bitcoin work as a currency, and you will see more efforts like that in the future. But what's really going on is that this is just a lot of experimentation. They're just kind of launched and then people are trying to figure out what to do with them. All right, Paul, we'll have to leave it there for now. We did get a lot of questions on this and we'll definitely be watching uh, the crypto market for them. But thanks so much for answering these for us. Yep, thanks for having me on. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.